Okay, so on this video, I'm going to go over the X motive shock spacers. Um, this is a pretty uh, well discussed subject. Uh, basically, my understanding is when the subframe was originally designed at MEV, or excuse me, the chassis, um, over in, in England, a lot of the guys don't actually modify the cars, or not near as many as here. A lot of them just use the stock uh, Mazda Miata suspension. Uh, stock struts and springs and so the height that this mount up here was originally uh, designed at worked just fine there was uh, plenty of droop plenty of suspension travel however uh, when the chassis came over to the US and when there was um, English people that uh, decided to mod uh, their cars there's a notice that there wasn't enough ride height especially in the front um, basically you had a real, um, you didn't have anywhere close to parallel control arms and uh, tie rods there. The engine part uh, of, the, of the car actually sat quite a bit lower and people were having right height clearance. So the solution that was come up with by Exmotive was to add these um, shock spacers. Now the issue with these, you know, there's a couple things. One, they are not included in the kit price. Um, which bugs a lot of people, and I think a lot of people think that it is a necessity to have them, uh, especially if you're running an aftermarket uh, coilover suspension. Most have found that they're close, if not for sure, a necessity to have them. So it's something that a lot of people feel should be included in the kit, myself included. Uh, 125 bucks for these mounts is a fairly steep price for something that you really have to have for the kit to work. I think it's something that should just be included in the cost of the kit, even if it bumps up the price of the kit. Um, the other thing is they are a horrendous pain to install. Uh, a lot of issues with basically, not so much in the fronts, there's plenty of clearance, but in the rears they're, they're a very small spacer, I'll show you here in a minute, and they do not, um, it is not easy to make them fit. In my experience, like everything I've had on this car so far, there's been a fair amount of fabrication and, and metal cutting in order to get things to fit how they really should just come to you. Uh, they should come being able to fit. The stuff that I was shipped, um, yes, I could get the bolts in. I could not without modifying them. Um, that shouldn't need to be done. They should give you a shorter bolt or have a larger space or have a gap. I'll show you guys that stuff in a minute. But um, basically, I just kind of wanted to go over real quick on how you can, um, how the proper way of mounting these are, just so you can get the look of it, especially in the rear, because it's quite a bit trickier. So let's get going. I'll show you guys some uh, pictures of how I got these mounted. There's very limited instructions on Xmotive's website uh, as far as the installation goes for these strut mounts. Uh, basically, it goes as far as to say, help you identify the front ones and the left and the right ones. But there's really... You know, they call it a, a build guide and installation instructions. They're, honestly, they're, they're pretty weak at that point. But basically what it is, is um, the orientation is there are three holes, one here, one here, and then one on the other side. That side of these taller mounts goes on the bottom in the front. The taller ones go on the front. The shorter ones go on the back. Then the side with two holes, there's one here, and then there's another one here that you can't see because the camera position. These should go toward the outside and toward the rear of the car. So now there's two points here that you can position the uh, shock mounts, and that uh, basically allows you to get the control arm here farther in toward the engine, or what I needed farther out uh, to clear the hole in the control arm. Then there's another bolt right back here that the uh, top hat of the, sh uh, the shock mounts to. And then there's a mounting point here and also one back over here, um, right under here, that basically bolts to the, the frame of the car. And there is some movement and adjustability inside those. So this is how a properly mounted front uh, shock spacer should look. Now to the rear mounts. This is the part that makes most people scream, including myself. Uh, as you can see, they're quite a bit thinner. Um, I'd say probably about 60% of the height of the front spacers. Uh, basically in the rear, you want to make sure these the, the side with these two machined holes here and two machined holes here is facing out. Um, I believe there is no left or right. Uh, they're both the same. And then there is a spot with 
three flange, or I should say machined out areas in here, and these three should be on the bottom and facing out. So that's how you can identify the left and the right side. Now, um, onto the issues with this. Um, if you can see here, I don't know if it's in the camera, I'm running the Flying Miata VMAX Classic coilovers. They do have, in all fairness, a rather long stud here. Um, normally this has a nice pointed little dome here uh, for basically the guide for feeding the nut on. This will not fit because of this bolt up here. Um, one, this bolt needs to be the head on the bottom and the nut on the top, but the problem is you cannot uh, get this up through the other hole that's right down here because it will contact the bolt here. So this needs to be cut off in order to make this work. Also on the other side, um, the mount here, to get this bolt up it is too long. So I actually had to cut the head of the bolt down and shave an angle on the side. Um, I don't know if you can see it in there, it's too hard to see with it installed here. But that was the only way to get that bolt in through this small gap here and up. And then same thing, this stud will hit that bolt so it needs to be cut off. So this needs to be done on both sides. So basically the the um, the process of installing these rears is first you must fabricate the bolts, um, cut them down, get everything fitted and mounted to the frame. Then you have to slowly guide the strut um, here and these uh, bolts up through the holes. But they cannot go, you cannot put it all the way up and rest the car. You have to just get these the top of these and the threads at high enough through here that you can then slip the bolt under through this small gap start to screw it down, then release the jack to let the car down. So, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of work there. Uh, it's it's kind of a, a puzzle putting it all together. And unfortunately, this is really not explained anywhere very well that I've seen. Um, pretty much just shows the spacing, but doesn't show a lot of the issues that happened during the installation. So anyways, just a quick little tidbit on um, how I'm going about installing these uh, these uh, shock spacers uh, to give you guys an idea of what they look like and how to do it and what the proper orientation is. Okay, so just in wrapping this up, I want to give you guys a quick uh, uh, video of how each spacer works in the front and the rear, just to kind of show you some mounting locations and how they are installed. So this is the front spacer. That is how they should look for you uh, after you have them installed. And now let's uh, head over to the rear. Going to be a little harder to see here because I got the tire on. But um, rear spacer here, you can see these two holes on the outside of the car. So that's the ending of the video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick... Uh, you know, view on camera of what this looks like and how you have to have these uh, properly mounted. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, please uh, like below and subscribe. Appreciate it.